And this is Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge for the Nintendo Game Boy. I just realized the, uh, the subtitle isn't actually on the title screen or anywhere in the game at all. I guess it's just on the box art. You have to read the instruction manual to, uh, to find out the subtitle of the game. So this game kind of answers the question. So the evil Dr. Wily has uh, this great plan to stop Mega Man. Uh, you know, in, in the original Mega Man game for the NES, he's got this great plan to uh, control these robot masters and, and uh, whatever, take over the world, whatever mad scientists do. And, you know, Mega Man appear, or shows up and, and stops, his, stops his evil plan. And, and uh, I don't know, and as, when I watch these kind, of, uh, these kind of stories as a kid in cartoons or whatever, I'd always ask myself, you know, that was a, that was a really good plan, like Wile E. Coyote or whatever. That was a really good plan, but one little thing went wrong. Why doesn't why doesn't he just try again? So this game is a response to uh, in my in my head. This game is a response to well, Doctor Wily tried a really good plan the first time around, but why didn't he just try again with the same basic idea? <laughs> so this game is a remix of uh, some of the Robot Masters, four Robot Masters from Mega Man One for NES, and four Robot Masters from Mega Man Two for NES. So this game came out in 1991, which was after the release of Mega Man 1 and 2 for NES. It also came out after the release of Mega Man 3 for NES, which is kind of funny. But yeah. The, um, oh my goodness, there's a pit. There's a bottomless pit in the screen below. <laughs> I remember the first time I got to this area. It's not very well uh, on the screen before this one. It's not very well uh, like choreographed. I, I thought it was the path forward. I didn't see the ladder in the corner. And so I jumped into the pit to go to the next screen below and just promptly died. <laughs> ah, good memories. Anyway, 1991. Made by Minakuchi Engineering. I pretty much love every game, every Game Boy game that this company has programmed. Minakuchi Engineering. They've made uh, Mega Man 1. Oh, for Game Boy, they made Mega Man 1. One, three, four, and five. They didn't do Mega Man 2, which is uh, probably the number one reason why it feels so different than the other four games in the series. But I guess I'll talk about that when I'm playing through Mega Man 2. Yeah, all of their. Uh, this development company. Well, I mean, more specifically, this game. But uh, pretty much every game I've played of theirs just has really, really really solid controls, really tight controls, really nice graphics, really pleasing to look at, easy to play. So here's Cutman, the first of the Robot Masters. I probably shouldn't have chosen him first in this playthrough. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, most notably because I'm about to get destroyed by him. I think he might be the most... Uh, I don't know. He's one of the more most random robot masters, at least in the in the first four. It's pretty easy to cheese the other ones. So he's too big to jump over. I can get him to jump over me, but the times that he jumps it appears to be kind of random. So it's really hard for me to time it right. Oh, so one thing worth noting. I don't know. That makes this game a little different from the NES version. <laughs> yeah, go Mega Man! Is uh, the way the way bullets are? It's kind of hard to explain. So, when playing the NES games, Mega Man's... Uh, ooh, Rolling Cutter. I love Rolling Cutter. So in the NES games, Mega Man's standard weapon, his standard, uh, standard shots there, uh, they fire really fast. They got a really, really nice sound effect. And... Uh, the collision with an enemy of the the sound effect the sound effect of when you hit an enemy an enemy hit is oh my gosh it's one of the most pleasing sound effects in video games in my opinion in a retro game and uh, Mega Man all the Mega Man games for Game Boy starting with this one they just don't have that good feeling it's more of a it's more of a mush more of a mush sound I don't know uh, additionally, 
I think it's the case, I haven't checked it, but I think it's the case where in the NES version, pretty much every bullet that connects with an enemy will count as a hit. Whereas in this game, the enemies kind of have a little a little buffer. You hit them once and you can't hit them again right away, or it just doesn't, just doesn't count as a hit. Ah yes, good old disappearing, reappearing map platforms. Classic Mega Man. So this uh this game has a few of them. The, the sections the the disappearing platforms in this level aren't too bad. Because if you mess up you just you just fall to the screen below and try again. So that's a slight annoyance, but uh not too much not too much of an inconvenience. <coughs> I don't remember if these guys are actually in the, these, uh, cloud guys, lightning guys, are actually in the original Elec Man stage for the NES. I only remember them from Air Man, from Mega Man 2. Uh, if you're familiar with Mega Man 1 for the NES, you'll notice that all the stages in this, this game, all the stages in this game are original to this game. There's nothing... Nothing uh, directly ripped from from the NES version. So even if you played the NES games to death, this is still mostly an all-new experience. I mean, the Robot Masters themselves are going to be pretty much the same as what you're used to. But all the stages are a new experience. Susie's! So many Susie's! This is like World of Susie level. What's in this section? Oh, no Susie's. So this was my, uh, this was my first <laughs> Mega Man 1. Oh man, this is one of my very favorite games. And it has, it's very special to me. Mega Man 1 for Game Boy is uh, one of the first games I got. I think I got it, no, I got it when I was 10 years old. I think when I was 10 years old for Christmas. It, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. The consequence of that, it was uh, every, well, the, the next year, the following year, I also got, I then got Mega Man 2 for Game Boy for Christmas. Oh, I hate these big jumping things. Sometimes they jump high enough to jump over you, but I never found out if there was a way to, like, force them to jump over you. Like, to somehow cheese the random number generator. Because, uh, I don't know. Every time I hope they'll jump over me, they always just do a tiny jump and smash me in the face. Ah, uh, a luck man's pretty easy to, uh... <laughs> I think I don't think I get hit at all here. He's pretty easy to cheese. Uh, if you shoot a bullet, he'll do this little jump. It's tricky. If you use the weapon that's that's strong against him, uh, I think I don't know if it's because he sees you using the weapon, you know, in the code, or if it's because you don't hit him right away. But he just starts launching electric beams nonstop. So it's actually easier for me to just kind of hit him with this uh, the standard weapon. And uh, take advantage of the the kind of cheesy AI. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I got Mega Man for Christmas. And I got Mega Man 2 for the next Christmas. And Mega Man 3 for the next Christmas. All for Game Boy. And uh, the consequence was, like, when the snow started falling around November or December. Uh, sure, it was Christmas time to me. But really it felt like uh, a warm, nostalgic Mega Man time. So now, and I and still get that, even now as I'm uh, getting older, I still think of December as like Mega Man time. I just get that Mega Man feeling in the air. Susie! I really like these enemies. They're just kind of relaxing. Oh great, except when I run into them. Uh. I made a stage in Mega Man Maker that was pretty much all Susie's. I should play that one. Oh man, I miss it. Uh, okay, so yeah, I got Mega Man for Christmas. Um, ten years old. Ten years old, fire up Mega Man for the Game Boy, and it got wrecked. Oh my gosh, this game was so hard. Uh, so another reason, or one reason I love this game so much is because any any time a game can be uh, impossibly challenging, 
at first, but then allow me to improve and progress as a player to the point where I can pretty much breeze through it really impresses me. That's happened with a few games. It's happened with uh, Space Channel 5, <laughs> which is why I often half-jokingly cite it as uh, Space Channel 5 for the Sega Dreamcast is one of my favorite games of all time. Or even my favorite game of all time. It was just because, uh, you know, the first time I played it, I lost in the first, like, minute. And now I can pretty much play through the whole game without, uh, without missing anything. And likewise with this game. It was so stressful and challenging at first, but now when I play it, yeah, it's a it's a good challenge. Y you know, I pretty much have the game memorized, so it's not no big surprises. But uh, yeah, it's always a it's still always a decent challenge. Nothing nothing boring me here. Oh, if you have a uh, in this little this little, I like that little flame there. It took me forever before I realized if you have the ice beam. You can freeze the fire and then use it as a platform to go up and get jump up and get that uh, health up there. Which I could have used now because I don't have full health. So let's see, I got Mega Man for Christmas. Every Christmas was Mega Man time. Hmm. <laughs> Also, this was uh, so this was my first introduction to the Mega Man series. Oh, it took me forever to figure out how to get by these things without getting hit. I just figured you had to tank it. Oh no, it's kind of fun. So this was my first introduction to the Mega Man series. Um, I'd never played a Mega Man game before this one. You know, I read Nintendo Power magazine and and uh, knew about the character and the games but uh, had never played them before. So this was my first, which means, and since this is a, uh, you know, this is a pretty, pretty simple game. I mean, the stories in the instruction manual. Did I finish talking about that? It was, uh, you know, how uh, Dr. Wily is, oh, right, so, so in Mega Man 1, oh, here we go, Fireman. So I don't think I ever, Fireman never actually shoots at me. So the way I cheese this boss, he only he only shoots his fire shot at you if if he stops running and he'll only stop running when he's a certain distance from Mega Man. So as long as you chase him, it's kind of looks kind of funny. I'm gonna get you. No, I'm gonna get you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You just kind of run back and forth. If you charge at him, he'll run away, and then you run back and he'll run chase you again. As long which will cause him to keep running, which means he'll never actually fire a shot. Otherwise, he'll just stand in place and shoot fire. Um, anyway, this was my first, uh, this was my first experience with Mega Man, and it's kind of a simple game, meaning that, you know, you don't see Dr. Light in it. There's no reference to Dr. Light. There's no, um, I didn't know who Roll was, Mega Man's sister, or, you know, Proto Man, or Blues, whatever his name is, whatever he goes by. Um, oh, I remember this part. I was not used to sliding on the ice yet in this playthrough. So I was I got really frustrated here. I was like, oh crap, now I'm gonna have to replay this section. I was like, what? Oh, it's just the screen before. Like, not even the full screen before. This is the exact same spot where I just died. One of the, one of the things that does make this game tricky is that the quote, halfway points are pretty early in the level. So if you uh, if you do make a mistake and die, it's a, uh, you get sent, you get sent pretty far back towards the beginning of the stage. That's no fun. Just gotta get good, and don't die. But it's still frustrating. <laughs> Bad game designers. Um, yeah. So especially Roll. I think Roll is a fan favorite. Mega Man's sister. Robotic sister. And uh, I, j I didn't even I didn't even know she was a thing. Because she's not, just not in this game. 
Oh man, this is like a weird puzzle room. This is, I don't think this is in any of the NES games. Gotta jump around. When I first got in these rooms, I was so confused. So I'm standing on the stairs and just watching Icicle Falls and I'm like, what? <laughs> Super weird. But yeah, kind of fun. As long as you don't get uh, freaked out or start slipping on the ice too much. That's not too hard to get through it. Aww, I like the nice little mountains in the background. Ow. So later Mega Man games... Uh, I don't know how, how highly this one, uh, this game ranks among all the uh, Mega Man games. Uh, just compared to the to the um just comparing all the five game boy games i know the i know mega man five mega man five gets uh is very highly regarded it's a very unique one in the series <laughs> i think iceman has exactly zero randomness he just does iceman iceman's gonna do what iceman's gonna do Um, Mega Man 5 for Game Boy is very highly regarded. It's an extremely unique entry in the series, even taking into consideration the, uh, the NES games. And uh, I know Mega Man 2 is eh, kind of regarded as the weakest in the Game Boy series, and for good reasons that I'll, I'll probably talk about when I play Mega Man 2. Uh, this game... This game is probably my favorite. This game is my favorite taking into consideration the, uh, ooh, I know that password. Time for eyebrows, Dr. Eyebrows. This game is probably my favorite taking into consideration nostalgia. Um, it's one of the Mega Man games I replay the most. I pretty much never get tired of it. It is... So Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 for Game Boy. Yeah, good job, David. Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 for Game Boy are um, are quite quite simplistic. Uh, Mega Man 1 and 2 in particular they have you know there's no there's no story in the game. There's no dialogue. There's no uh, there's no weapon store. There's no extra item upgrades. Oh, I mean, oh, so I've got uh, the carry item right here. That's uh, other than that. There's no. It's just Robot Master, Robot Master uh, weapons. Um, and likewise with Mega Man Two and Three for Game Boy. Mega Man Three is for Game Boy is really solid. Uh, and it's the other one I replay a whole lot, just because. You know, it's good Good luck this game, but with, uh, you know, just a little more. And, uh, but not so much that uh, it really, really bogs down replayability. By the time you get to Mega Man 4, they introduce uh, P-chips, collectibles, uh, the item shop, lots and lots of dialogue, and, oh, that's just a... I don't know. It kind of feels like a slog to go through all that, and I just want to—I just want to jump and shoot. That's all I'm here for. So up until this point, so you know, this is the second to last, second to last level. This is the second to last level, and up until this point, so I'm in Wily's Fortress. Up to this point in this game, I've pretty much never used any special weapons. I just stick with the uh, standard Mega Buster. Or whatever, standard weapon, standard chop, uh, including with the bosses, because uh, that's what that's generally how I play. Uh, oops, kind of screwed that up. That's how I play Mega Man games. Just stick with uh, stick with the uh, standard weapon unless needed. And I love these last two stages, these two Wily stages, because in my opinion, they really, really do a good job of making me cycle through all the different weapons I've gotten throughout the game. 
Oh, so for those who, for anyone who isn't uh, used to this, I mentioned I mentioned there's eight bosses. There's two bosses from Mega Man One for NES. I'm sorry, four bosses from Mega Man One for NES and four bosses from Mega Man Two for NES. But we've only done four bosses, four Robot Masters, and we're already at the Wily levels. So this game is unique in in regards to both the NES games and the Game Boy games and that there are only four four Robot Master stages and uh, the the boss at the end of this first Wily level is actually just the four it's just the four Robot Masters from Mega Man 2 that are in the game so the four Mega Man 2 Robot Masters don't have their own levels their own stages in this game they just uh, it's just the boss fights I guess it does make the game a little shorter than it could be, but whatever, it's portable. Uh, it never really bothered me. I don't miss, uh... I don't miss not having a portable version of, uh... Quick Man stage there with those stupid... Stupid laser beams of death. But yeah, I pretty much change weapons on every single screen. But the number one rule... The number one rule in Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge is always keep your carry item at uh, full energy. Keep the, uh, yeah, the energy full for that item. Squirms. <laughs> the first time I saw these enemies, I was just, <laughs> I was just killing them. I was like, wow, there sure are a lot of these. Then I realized, oh, they just keep coming forever. You just gotta, just gotta have faith and step forward, and they just, uh, they just move out of the way. Which makes it extra annoying when I get hurt by them because it's entirely my fault. But yeah, the cutter, cut weapon here uh, makes quick work of them, and uh, you know you get so much energy, <laughs> cracky. You get so much uh, weapon energy that it really doesn't it doesn't run out or anything. Oh, I think I've gotten this head. I've gotten this Mega Man, this one up at least once. It requires using the carry item twice in a row, but you can only shoot one at a time. You can only use one at a time. So you have to wait for the first one to end, jump up just before it disappears and set another one. And if you mess up, you fall and hit the spikes below. So it's not really worth it to me. Dr. Wily teleport system. Yeah. Oh, I love his little spinning Sonic the Hedgehog legs. Little Roadrunner legs down there. I assume there's people that can beat Quick Man without uh, getting hit by his stupid boomerangs, but yeah, that's not me. And that's it. You just fight the four bosses. I think Quick Boomerang. Quick Boomerang is my favorite Mega Man, uh, you know, special weapon. Um, I love that it's uh, you know quick fire. You can just hold the you can just hold the attack button. Oh man, this I did a really good job in this battle. I think I got hit like once, or maybe twice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Flash Man's a pain in my butt. Ah, oh, lame. Almost. Um, quick, uh, quick boomerang. So it's a uh, auto fire. So you just hold the attack button, and it just keeps uh, just keeps shooting boomerangs. Uh, and as a bonus, oh, and uh, you know it's pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good damage, and uh, uses very little weapon energy. Um, I think I heard in the I heard in the uh, in the NES version as long as you collect the boomerangs, you don't use the weapon energy. The weapon energy only gets used when it when there's a collision with a with an enemy, which is kind of cool. Which would explain why it lasts why you get so many uh, quick boomerang attacks. Uh, and the NES version has the added bonus that uh, it turns Mega Man pink, so hot. So I haven't talked about the graphics yet in this game. Um, 
Ah, the... The design, the uh, graphic designers for this game, whoever did the graphics, did that thing where all of the, uh, most of the, um, or all of, all of the foreground characters, all of the, uh, the sprites, the foreground sprites, the enemies, uh, the weapons, the in Mega Man, they all have a nice, nice solid black outline. Makes them really easy to see, and then they put the uh, the backgrounds. Mostly, most of the backgrounds are all the lighter shades of gray, which really make the make the uh, sprites pop out. It's really nice. Additionally, look at all the details in the background. This computer system, for example, there's almost no. Is there any spot in this game? There, there's so many Game Boy games where there's just uh, <laughs> just a plain white background. And oh my gosh, they look so boring. I think, uh, what is it, Super, Super Return of the Jedi is just Luke Skywalker running, running around in front of a big white screen for Game Boy. Uh, what was another one? I mean, even the launch title, Super Mario Land, has a little line art of mountains in the background, which is cute. Such a tiny cartridge. But the later games, I don't know. I don't know what their excuse is. Oh, Turrican. Turrican's another game that's just uh, plain white backgrounds. Oh, I love this. So every Mega Man Game Boy game has one new special boss, like a Robot Master type boss. And the game, one in this game is Anchor, who is a knight, a robot knight with his sword. And you can only hit him while he's charging up his sword. Oh my gosh. And the more you hit him, the bigger his sword beam gets. So if you if you don't hit him at all or hit him like once, it'll just be this tiny little pew shot across the screen. If you hit him three times, which I keep doing, it's that big. You can actually hit him four times and it becomes uh, as big as it can be, but still able to jump over it. So that's kind of a cool boss idea. And the weapon you get from him is mirror. Oh, what? Oh, mirror buster. I was gonna say mirror shield. Mirror buster. Uh oh. What's this? Doctor Wily's escaping. Where are he and his eyebrows going now? Aw, sparkling stars. This is the kind of little details I was really hard to see on the original Game Boy. But like the more I played it, like it, it was forever before I realized his uh, Dr. Wily teleport station uh, actually said the words Dr. Wily teleport station. I wonder if it says it in the Game Boy game, or I'm sorry, the Japanese version. <laughs> Should look that up. All right, we now followed Wily into his space station in space. And this is the last level in the game, ending with the uh, climactic battle between uh, Mega Man and Dr. Wily once and for all. He's gonna stop him. So yeah, once again, I'm just switching weapons and items constantly. I think these last two stages, the stage that we just that was just finished, and then this stage, are so well designed to cause the player. Usually that connects with the little guy on the ground. So well designed to kind of force the player to uh, use all the items in their inventory. Most Mega Man games, I just I just breeze. Uh, I don't breeze through them. I just go through them using nothing but the. Uh, Standard, standard shot. And, and, you know, it's nice and quick to change weapons, so it's not really annoying or anything. Ugh. Stupid fan. All right, so this is where... More reappearing, disappearing blocks. This one's not too hard. You just follow it along. They just put the spikes there to make you nervous. But it's not hard. Aw, hey Saturn. So yeah, Dr. Wily's trying again in this game. Reusing his old Robot Master ideas and a new plan to stop Mega Man. I don't remember if the uh, instruction manual actually said if there's anything more to that other than just Dr. Wily's trying again. <laughs> Which, you know, explains the... Uh, explains the... Uh, the robot master is being reused. I think 
I don't know if uh, the later Mega Man, well, you know, which is why it's called Dr. Wily's Revenge, you know, reusing a lot of the assets from the from the Nintendo games. I don't, I don't remember if, uh, I'll have to look it up. I don't know if the uh, Mega Man 2, 3, 4, and 5, well, 5 definitely not. I don't remember if Mega Man 2, 3, or 4 have similar, you know, stories like that in the or plots like that in the instruction manuals. I kind of want to look it up now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I'm just here to jump and shoot. Oh, so this part, so I equip carry. This part used to be the most stressful part in the game for me because you have to do this super hard jumps like right here where I mess it up and I would just die. But if you equip carry, you can save yourself. You got a few, uh, gives yourself a few extra tries. Well, I mean, it gives yourself enough tries to, hey, I got it that time. Enough tries to get to the end if you need to. You can just use carry to get by. There's so many times in Mega Man games where, like even on the NES games or the Game Boy games, where I say to myself, man, this is so hard and stressful and unfair. And then the more I play it and the better I get, I realize, wow, like the game, if you play it in the right order, the game will give you an item that will allow you to just, you know, play more smartly and get by this without any any problem at all. First try. Man, really well made. So this game has no E-Tanks. Uh, E-Tanks are first introduced in the Game Boy games, starting with the next game, Mega Man 2. I don't know why I could not remember how to do this one without getting hit. I think there's a way to get them without getting hit, but yeah, I don't know. Oh well, so I get hit. And get hit again. <laughs> oh, he's high enough to jump over. That's probably all I needed to do. Whatever. I could go up on top here to get some, uh, oh yeah, just the weapon energy. Um, let's see, what else is in this game? Amazing graphics. Oh, the, uh, I don't think, so as for the soundtrack, I think the soundtrack in this game is outstanding. So both, uh, what is it, the, so the two Wily levels are all original music, two new, two original songs, and they're outstanding. The ending music is uh, original song. I'm pretty sure the uh, title screen music is an original song, which is outstanding. Um, I would, yeah, I don't think there's any song in this game that isn't really, really good. Like there's nothing I would skip. <laughs> for example, in Mega Man 2 for NES, an incredible game with incredible music but man that uh weapon get music <laughs> what is it do 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 <laughs> repeat uh oh yeah it was a long time before i realized the heat weapon can uh break these uh break these blocks here it's kind of a little little s secret path around uh around the enemies if you have the uh if you have a uh, weapon energy for it Uh, so yeah, the music's really good. Gotta fill up that carry. That's right, keep it full. Um, the, uh, the first four stages, the four Robot Masters from Mega Man 1, they all have the same music from their NES version, NES game. The same music that's in the NES version of the game. But, um... They're slightly different remixes. Uh, I think they're all better than the NES version. And the most notably different one is the music from Cutman. Cutman, it's the same song, but it has a different introduction and it has a different syncopation. It's really hard for me to describe. I've never successfully described it to anyone before, but uh, I don't know. If you really like the Cutman music, I would invite you to, uh, yeah, check out the Game Boy version. Oh, this is it. Time, time, time. Last Pac-Man's before the final boss. Check out the Cutman music from from Mega Man 1, Dr. Wily's Revenge for Game Boy. Because, uh, yeah, I think it's a way better version. 
I can't remember what hurts this guy. I think pretty much any weapon will hurt him, but I like Quick Boomerang because I can just, uh, I can focus on dodge. Ow. I, as I said, I can focus on dodging the buzz saws without having to uh, worry about aim or anything. And now the final battle. The final countdown. Oh, he's got a little door on the side of his head. That's how Wily gets in. I don't think that'll fit his head. I don't even think that'll fit his eyebrows. So this is the final battle and you have to use, dun dun dun, the special weapon you got from the special boss in the game, Anchor. Uh, the weapon is Mirror Buster. So the only way to hurt him is to reflect these shots back at him. And uh, so I trick the, <laughs> I guess he's got a little chomper guy. I tricked the chomper guy into, you know, haha, you think I'm here, but I'm not. And then just run away and he's easy to dodge. It only gets tricky when I get too cocky and try to uh, try to reflect all the bullets. Aww. And then get hit in the back. Dr. Wily, I forgive you. Wait, oh, oh, he actually doesn't escape. I think starting in Mega Man 2, he, he always begs. <laughs> He always begs, uh, please don't kill him, don't hurt me, I'm sorry. He always begs for forgiveness. And then uh, I think starting in Mega Man 2 and then 3 and 4, he, uh, they show a little animation of him uh, wiggling them eyebrows and escaping. Oh, what have we got? All the cast characters. Oh, I love this. Susie, I love you, Susie. One of my favorite Mega Man enemies. Janky. Little fireball. Cutting wheel. So this uh, this music is beautiful. And fun fact, I, David Gazellis, made the uh, original MIDI, MIDI version of this song. I'm sorry, uh, I had the game and I transcribed it into a, uh, into a MIDI file. So, you know, back in the 90s when MP3s we're in a thing we could download on our 56k modems. I made the MIDI version of this song and hosted it on the, or posted it on the, uh, posted it on the uh, unofficial Mega Man homepage. I think it's still there. Squirm. Mole. Pee -pee. Sniper Joe. Ah, classic. I love Sniper Joe. What a great idea. There's so many good enemies in the Mega Man series. I hate big guys. These are not a good enemy. Ugh. I guess they make me play differently than I'm used to. Oh, Kaminari Goro. I don't know why they're called Goro. Kaminari means uh, thunder and lightning, I think. In Japanese. Tanky maker. Boombi Hedi. I don't know why they're called Boombi Hedi. I think I think Hedi is short for helicopter or helicopter. Is my guess. Hey, cut man. I like that they use like the anime drawing versions of their of their faces. It's cute. Also I didn't realize since I'd only ever played this game, I didn't realize all the robot masters have numbers. I guess if you beat the, uh, at the end of the, uh, oh, Ice Man, you're cute. At the end of the NES versions, you see all the numbers, Robot Master numbers for all the Robot Masters. Fireman, oh, I like his hair. It's hot. Lol. Bubble Man, wearing his mask. Aw, <laughs> Heat Man. I just wanna give him a hug. Quick man. It's too cool. Too cool for school. Flash man. I'm gonna call you Chin Man. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Mega Man walks along in his space shuttle. I don't know how he got a space shuttle. I guess it's about the same 
follows the same logic as uh, Sonic and Tails ending up in a biplane. I don't know. I love this animation. I thought it looked so cool when I was a kid. Still looks cool. Yeah! That's Mega Man 1. Dr. Wily's, Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge. The first Mega Man game for Game Boy. One of my favorite games. Great graphics. Great music. Yeah. I recommend it. Thanks for watching.